So hey everyone, my name is Mihai, and uh, together with uh, Muru, who unfortunately can't be here today, I'm going to be talking to you about data processing at scale with Knative and Bentos. Uh, so a bit about us. I'm a principal software engineer at Optum, and I work on data streaming, and I'm also a Bentos contributor. And Muro is a staff software engineer at Box, and he works on container platforms. Uh, he's an open source contributor, and he's also part of the Knative steering committee member uh, representing end users. Uh, and for today, we're going to cover Knative auto scaling, how that works, uh, Bentos itself, and why it's useful, and how you can use it. Uh, how to combine Bentos and Knative, and what are the benefits? And I'll do a demo on sentiment analysis on Twitter data using these two components in Mix. Um, and now I have to play a video from Muru, who, like I said, unfortunately can't be here, and he'll cover the first part on Knative auto scaling. Um, today work? we are going to be talking about my favorite feature in Knative, uh, which is the Knative pod auto scaling. Yeah. Uh, the other favorite feature of mine is the developer experience that you get out of Knative. Uh, what I mean by developer experience is like uh, you create one Knative service and that creates all the deployment Knative, uh, sorry, Kubernetes artifacts for you. Apart from that, you also get auto TLS and the custom domain, things like that. So about Knative auto scaling, um, how does Knative provide this auto scaling for you? Uh, there are two metrics uh, that uh, it could use one is concurrency number of concurrent requests your application receives or number of requests per second the default one is concurrency and the default value is uh, 100 for example you create a knative service without changing any default values and you send in like 150 requests to your application you should have two pods of application running and this could be changed based on your needs it could be either concurrency or request per second and you can change this value around and if you see who is sending these requests to you it could be end users like millions of end users accessing your application or it could be uh, an application calling your apis or it could be you could be leveraging knative eventing and which could source data from multiple event sources and send it over to your application since this is in pushing the request to the knative service we call this like push based auto scale um, there is another set of uh, use cases, like batch use cases, like the data which is in database or CSV. Can we use Knative uh, for auto scaling to speed up the process? Yes, you could, but you have to develop a component which is like for each use case, which uh, takes the data from, pulls it from a database and send it over to uh, the Knative service. And since it pulls the data, we call it like pool-based auto scaling. And what I mean by like a special component or a bespoke component is like, suppose if you want to source data from a CSV, you need to develop a component which can source it from CSV. Like let's say you want to process like 100,000 records. It has to take it and then it has to chunk it. It has to parallelly call your Knative service, like maybe 100 requests in parallel with 10 records per request to get the uh, pod auto scaling and the process to be done quickly. Wouldn't it be nice if there is a component which could integrate with multiple data sources and it's just configurable and it could also integrate with multiple things. We don't even need multiple things. We just need like HTTP gRPC sync to send the data over and it is scalable based on uh, um, the load and is it re is resilient to failures. If there's any failure during the whole processing, it's able to catch up and last but not the least observe. We should be able to observe the whole process. Um, to talk about this component, uh, I'm going to hand it over to my co-presenter, Mihe here. Uh, thank you all. Over to you, Mihe. Yeah. So that was uh, Muru's part, and thank you for listening to that. I'm sorry we had a bit of technical difficulties. Um, so let me go to the next part of the talk. And I'm going to go into Bentos here. So what is Bentos? And as Ashley Jeffs, the Bentos creator, likes to describe it, it's fancy stream processing made operationally mundane. And what he means by this is that Bentos is a very simple thing. It's a single static binary. Um, it supports many sources and many things, like real time, batch, file storage, etc. cetera. Um, and you have a configuration for it. And in the configuration, you specify your sources, your sinks, and then various operations that have to happen on the messages as they are in flight from a source to a sync. Uh, and what kind of operations do I mean? Well, you can do transformations, like imagine a schema migration for various messages. 
um, filtering. Like if you want to drop some messages you don't care about, you can just uh, do that. Or hydration, if you want to, um, certain fields in the messages need to be adjusted somehow and hydrated. Uh, or enhance uh, enrichments, if you want to like, for example, get data from some other source and put it in the original message and enhance it and then send it to the output. Uh, and why Bentos? Well, as you probably guessed by now, it's written in Go. There's the Go Gopher here. Uh, it's performant and simple. So, you know, very good at this kind of small workflows where you launch it as a Lambda and it does the thing. Uh, it supports YAML and QE configs. Well, QE is kind of a recent addition which is used to generate the YAML config for Bentos. Um, it's stateless, so it doesn't store any state locally about the messages that are inside uh, in flight in Bentos. Uh, you can, however, configure a cache for it. So, for example, if you want to um, have something like an in process cache or an external cache, you can do that. Uh, and it's extendable. So, as I said, it's written in Go. You can import it as a library, create a custom Bentos binary with your own additions, and have that as a custom functionality. So, let's combine them. Uh, we can take Bentos, we can take Knative Serving put them together and see how this thing works and how you can get Knative to do the auto-scaling for it and um, do whatever you want for your pool-based auto-scaling model that Muru was introducing back, then, uh, back in the video. Um, and for the demo that I'm presenting here, um, I'm gonna have a local Kubernetes cluster, which is just gonna be kind, basically, and it's gonna run Knative Serving, and Knative Serving is gonna auto-scale this sentiment analysis lambda which I'm going to show in a minute. Uh, and Bentos is going to run here on the side as a separate process. And there's going to be a database. In my case, I just have a Postgres locally running. Uh, and there's a source and sync table. And Bentos is going to read data from the source, batch load it, and then it's going to construct these batches that it's going to send for processing for the sentiment analysis app. And then it's going to batch store in the sync the data that it gets. Um, and having said that, I'm gonna go into the demo and please bear with me because this is gonna be kind of complex and I hope I, it won't blow up on me. <laughs> um, right. So I have a pretty long readme here and I'm gonna try to go through it and hopefully everything is gonna work. What I did do in advance is I, I, I did deploy the Knative serving cluster and kind. So everything there should be already running. Let's just go through that. Oops. Uh, hopefully this is gonna work. So yeah, we have Knative Serving running here and all the um, uh, kind stuff running in there. And I'm just gonna launch here um, a watch on my pods so I can see things coming up. So there's no pods yet in here. Um, so what I want to do now is create my Lambda. And by the way, this is probably a good time to mention that my Lambda is actually a Bentos, a custom Bentos instance which imports a sentiment analysis library. Um, and to show you what I mean, um, there's this deploy Bentos Vader script here which basically has inside it a pretty boring Knative configuration with a, bu with a bunch of annotations. You can see I'm setting the target RPS to 200 and auto scale max 10 instances so I don't blow up my laptop. And it's checking the window every six seconds. Um, right, so let, let's do that. Whoops. So we created the config for our uh, Bentos Vader, Vader being the sentiment analysis library that I'm using. And now I'm launching uh, Bentos Vader. So this is running that Knative CRD and starting it up. And we can see here the first Bentos, Bentos Vader pod coming up. Uh, it takes like 20 seconds to start up, so I'm just waiting for it. Um, and in the meantime, uh, we have this curl command here pre-prepared. Okay, you see it came up, so it's running, it's healthy. Uh, and if I run my curl command, oops, uh, you can see here all the way at the bottom that it did produce this output. So I said, hey, you know, uh, I love Bentos, and it computed the sentiment for this, and it came up with a bunch of uh, numbers that I'm not gonna try to explain in detail, but it looks pretty positive, like it's a positive number here. Um, 
Right, and we have one pod running. So now what I want to do is start my database. So I'm gonna start the Postgres in Docker. Uh, and I'm gonna populate the database. And uh, I, I managed to sneak in here another Bentos, which actually loads the data into Postgres just for fun. Um, so now let's look at our data. Uh, so if we select count, oh, whoops. We see we have about uh, almost 1,500 records in here, and in our sync, we don't have anything. Sync. Yeah, and then if we look at our source, let's just have a quick look, see at it. Uh, yeah, we have this ID, and we have the text of the tweets. Um, yeah, that, it doesn't matter too much, it's just a bunch of stuff. Right. Uh, and now I want to launch a Prometheus instance just to show you a bunch of metrics. And I have a URL ready made for it here. And as you can see, there's no data yet, so I'm not pulling anything from under my sleeve. Uh, and now what I want to do is run Bentos. And this is the Bentos that does the batch loading from the source table that I showed you in the diagram on the slides. Uh, and the config for it that I have is here. Oops. So it has an input, which is the Postgres with the source table, SVX, everything. It has a pipeline where I'm reaching out into this Lambda and I'm asking it for the sentiment analysis data. And then the output is here, which puts the data in the sync and it just puts those four fields that are computed and I'm applying a bunch of output batching just such that this output is fast enough to show you the auto scaling. Um, so if we go back here and I time my Bentos, this is gonna take about 30 seconds something. So we can see here on the right that our one pod is running and it's spinning another one up just because it realized that it's doing a bunch more requests than one can handle. Uh, if you remember, I configured this uh, um, <clears throat> here with 200 RPS. Um, yeah, so it's still churning along. We can actually um, look at our database if we want to, but I'm just going to leave it alone. <laughs> um, and see. Sync. Right, so it's almost there. I hope it's gonna work well because like, it's a local demo, so my laptop sometimes is slower, it's faster, it depends on how these containers are initialized and before it was a bit faster, but anyway, let's, let's just bear with it. There we go, it finished. It finished in one minute and a few seconds, so we're good. Now let's try to play with the Bentos config a bit. And here I'm gonna use six threads instead of one to talk to this uh, Vader service, uh, Bentos Vader service. So if we run this again, uh, hopefully this time it should be faster. And we should see a bunch more pods coming up here, like two of them already came up, three. So things are going better. And if we look at our um, output data, if I still have it, I closed it, okay, great. Um, It's putting more data in the sink. And it should finish hopefully a bit faster than last time. Uh, like I said, it's a bit temperamental depending on how Docker initializes the container. So now I see it, it took, well, 38 seconds. It was a bit faster previously, but I think we did better. Like we ran a few more pods here. And now just for to drive it home, like we can look in Prometheus here to see what we did. So we see initially we ran it here and we had about uh, 260 uh, messages processed per second by the Lambda. And over here, we reached a peak of uh, 478, and for some reason it dipped down a bit. I'm not sure why, but like I said, it's running locally, so it's a bit temperamental. Um, so yeah, that kind of uh, shows you what I wanted to demo. And if I go back to my slides, I just want to say in summary, Knative supports push-based auto-scaling, but for pool-based auto-scaling, we require bespoke components. And Bentos is one way of doing this. It provides all this um, functionality for free. It's configurable. 
and it lets us uh, reuse a lot of components and we can write a bunch of Bentos DSL to transform our messages and it's like a Kubernetes native application that can be run and supports all the probes we need, all the metrics, all the things that uh, make it an ideal choice for this kind of workflow. Um, and with that, I want to say thank you and I, I will take any questions you might have. Testing, testing. Thank you for the great talk. Quick question. Uh, concurrency or request-based auto-scaling? What's your take on this? And can, can you hear me? No, very lightly. Can you oh. maybe speak a bit louder? OK. Uh, question on concurrency or request-based auto-scaling. I saw you using request-based auto-scaling. Yeah. First, of, first question, why did you pick that one? Hello. And second, which one would you recommend for users? Yeah, it's, uh, it kind of depends. Like here, it was mostly because of, uh, so th the question is, uh, why did I use RPS instead of uh, um, uh, anything else? And this depends on like how you run the demo. I, I run it here locally and uh, it kind of, I try to fit around with the parameters to make it show something useful. But I think in production, things will be very different. So it really depends on your workflow and a more realistic test case to figure out what is the best way to configure Knative to auto scale the app. Um, but I don't have a realistic uh, setup, so I can't really play with it to, to give informed advice. Hope that helps. Any other question? Questions? Okay. Well, thank you, Minghai. I'm Maru, remotely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.